Hey, Twitter. Hey, YouTube. I've got to address both of you now. I'm putting these videos on both locations. If you're uh, watching on Twitter, thank you very much. I'm putting uh, this up there for my subscribers on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for what you do. Appreciate you guys' engagement and questions. I am going to do a, a quick little drive here today. And I am going to... Um, it's kind of cloudy, kind of rainy. I'm not going to test anything because I'm still on 11.4.1. And 11.4.1 is still um, kind of got the narrow roads issue. Ooh, look at this. We got a very interesting situation here. Car is coming and it's waiting and going around. That was good. The narrow roads here now. It needs to get over. Get on over a little bit further. Wow, did you see how it just kind of hogged the road? That car did exactly what I had to do because I was hogging the whole road. Um, and just talk about a couple more things that have been going on while we're doing a, a little bit of neighborhood driving and uh, driving kind of around uh, town. So, I, interesting, I had a mobile service visit this morning. Uh, I know many of us use mobile service visits um, or go to the shop based on the, the different types of event. I had a left rear tail light, uh, on, not on the hatchback, but on the body side that had condensation in the middle of it. And uh, it just all of a sudden happened. This car is still under warranty. Um, put it in there and the uh, appointment was available in about five days, which is completely reasonable. Uh, came out here and the uh, mobile service tech uh, did a great job swapping it out and uh, I'm on my way. So, you know, mobile service is still a really, really great service that Tesla offers. Probably way under appreciated and realized from those that, um, that use it, uh, you know, that don't have it like with other vendors. Um, I know in the past, kind of the, the length of time waiting on mobile service and maybe the number of technicians in your part of the, the country uh, or world might be a factor. Large speed bump here. I need it to slow down way more than that. That is a speed bump that can't do 17. Inappropriate speed for large speed bump. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let it kind of go, but as soon as it's not going to, this, this would blow my suspension. And it, see if it slows down more this time. I'm at 20, 19, 18, 17. Yeah, it just, I can't hit it at 17. Inappropriate speed for a very large speed bump. I'm trying to add the metadata on there so they know it's a large speed bump. Um, so in any case, good experience. We have about, we have probably five or six mobile techs that I think that serve in this area. Uh, some feedback that they do kind of say they, they do have to drive very large distances here in Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a pretty spread out city. Got a good two-way here. It should be able to see just fine. Creep limit, and there it's going just fine. Um, and he knocked it out really, really quick. But one of the things that I, I asked him, and this is a, perhaps a, the topic of conversation I wanted to get to, is the new option inside of the Tesla app or that Tesla is offering certain model cars uh, an, an extended warranty after the initial warranty. So this is a 2020 Model Y. I've got, um, you know, my warranty's coming up, you know, next March or when I hit 50,000 miles, I'm still in the low 40s. So, you know, I, I may hit one or the other. Uh, and for this car, it's 2,000 to extend it. Um, you know, I, I asked, you know, the, the mobile service tech, hey, how much was that to, if I were to pay for that? And, and the whole light and labor replacement would have been narrow roads behavior there, slowing quite uh, a bit a little less than $300, right? So I guess you just have to do the mental math to say how many of those $300 out of pocket expenses are you trying to avoid over an additional two years? You know, I have not had many type of service events that, that were expensive, uh, you know, and, and that might get to the point of crossing that threshold. So I think they've priced it just right to where it's like a hard decision on whether or not you know, buying that uh, service plan is, is worth it. Extended warranty is worth it. Uh, peace of mind, you know, um, this is a very early Model Y. So, per, you know, I think my VIN number is in like the 2500 series for Model Ys that were initially launched out of Fremont. Um, you know, so maybe I'll have a part that's aging a little prematurely, kind of in the you know, 50 to 70,000 mile range that I, I may wish I had it. Coming up on the drawbridge here, I do like to talk about the drawbridge uh, a little bit because... It is a unique thing with the way lights are displayed, the crossbars are displayed, and things like that. You know, it's kind of like a combination of stoplights and uh, railroad bars, and you see an auto, not a lot of it is being displayed. I haven't been able to get a bridge to go up uh, on a drive in a while. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I think I'm probably leaning towards getting the extended service warranty. 
um, because this is a very early Model Y, but it's been a really good car. Um, I've gone to the service center for a few issues. I did have a small corrosion issue that needed a paint fix. They fixed that right away. Um, and a few other little things. For those of you that have been following me, uh, there was an accident that happened um, back, you know, April a year ago, and uh, the, the car had some significant work onto it when uh, I got into an accident uh, with a, a motorcycle losing, losing control on the highway. Um, wasn't FSD's fault, wasn't Tesla's fault, it was just bad circumstance. Okay, very interesting. It's go, did it just miss a turn? It just, did you see what happened there? I didn't have the map out. It missed the turn because of that truck. It didn't get in the right lane, went straight through a yellow light that it was cautious about, and a very quick reroute here, uh, which is good. This will work. Um, and, I, and I guess I should have had the map open so everyone could have seen what was going on. I was expecting the right turn there. That truck with those cones made it go straight, kind of weaved a little bit. Probably if I, what I would have done, because that lane was open, would have been to slow down and very cautiously go to the right rather than straight. Um, but this reroute is exactly what it's supposed to do. Now we've kind of gone off a little bit and got another narrow road situation here, but with no uh, oncoming traffic. Okay, so that was my great mobile service experiment. If the technician happens to watch my videos, hey, it was great to meet you this morning. Thank you for coming out um, and doing such a great job and representing Tesla very, very well. Very knowledgeable, been working on cars for decades. Uh, so Tesla's got a great technician there. Uh, and then a little bit of conversation about the extended warranty. I think I'm gonna do it, but I'd love to hear some comments uh, in the thread below whether or not you guys think the extended warranty is worth it. Maybe you can talk me out of it or something, uh, or, or talk me into it further. The next thing I think that has happened uh, this week that I, I, I've been tweeting a little bit about and some great interaction there, um, and it was a little bit of unexpected news. Um, Elon and uh, Jim Farley had a Twitter Spaces announcement of collaboration of Ford uh, in 2024, having access to 12,000 uh, or more, um, which I think is basically growing the entire network and giving Ford access to the entire supercharger network, which, you know, is fully in line with, uh, you know, supporting the adoption of EVs and giving more cars access to charging infrastructure. Um, you know, but as a Tesla owner, you may be concerned about got a yield here it usually stops completely and then kind of acts like a stop sign there it had the right of way it should have gone through there i'll take a snapshot because i didn't disengage um and you might kind of say well wait a minute i, I don't want to have to wait in line with fords that are using my superchargers but probably the important thing we should be taking a right here the important thing to recognize is that there is in a very large incentive structure that's been put in place um, by the current administration with access to, to charging infrastructure that Tesla will benefit from. So while we may feel like we're losing a little bit of the moat that Tesla has around it and its brand for everyone to buy a Tesla rather than a Ford, um, if someone wants a Ford Lightning, you know, charging is probably one of their biggest, uh, you know, challenges because the, the other charging networks just are, don't have the reliability, perfect spacing, uh, and locations that Tesla has created and continues to build. I think I heard this week that they're putting in one supercharger every 12 hours globally. Uh, and that's just amazing. Still doing blinkers on the S-turn. Just going to point out the highlights while we're doing this. Uh, so, you know, good for Ford, good for Tesla. It's better for EVs. There is probably going to be uh, some good financial incentive for Tesla to do this do this both from incentives from the government and also probably charging. Now, they're not going to be able to gouge the Ford, you know, customers with, you know, prices that are twice as much as as Tesla is being charged for, but maybe they have a little bit of a premium. I, I, I it would make sense to do that a little bit. I mean, um, but that's also a little bit like, you know, you can't really have gas prices that are, you know, ridiculous just because a hurricane comes through. You know, there's a little bit of fair pricing that probably they need to be careful of. Um, and we are getting ready to reach our destination here. So I'm just showing you where we are and I will uh, end the trip and put FSD return in there and just kind of let it reroute itself and see what happens. Um, 
you know, so I, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a massive revenue opportunity other than an EV adoption opportunity, but access to the incentives that uh, will allow Tesla to further build out their infrastructure with perhaps some subsidies coming um, for supporting U.S. infrastructure. Um, very proud of that. I do think that if you haven't watched that Twitter spaces, I said watch. It's only a listen. There is no video. Uh, listen to it. Listen to Jim Farley's conversation. Now, granted, he is a CEO. He's out there, you know, speaking for Ford, and he's on with Elon. So, of course, he's probably going to be cordial uh, rather than competitive. But he's also very, very complimentary. Um, and I've got to tap the accelerator here to go through the green light with plenty of room that it didn't take. All right, we got a great double park situation. Let's see how it navigates it. All right, we got a truck up here that's just parking. I got a truck here and it's not doing it. So it's stuck here just a little bit. Um, what I need to do, I could tap it. There's nobody behind me, so I'm just gonna see what happens. This car here to my left is at a stoplight. As soon as he gets cleared, we will have plenty of room uh, to go by, but it won't take this gap that it has right here. I wonder if the double line has something to do with it also. Oh wait, it just it just started. Folded the mirrors, and it was, and it, now is it gonna go, give it, give it some more room? Very tight, look at that. Now, where's it going to go? It did it. Now, I had the opportunity to be patient. Uh, it was not human-like. I would have gone for that gap. As soon as that car that was next to me moved out of the way, it found its way around it. So I think that's a very common experience. I think that's uh, behaved pretty much like that everywhere. Um, but I was able to let it go and just kind of a big pothole right there. Um, I should have, if it, if it was going any faster than that, I would have disengaged, but it, uh, it was going a little slow, but pothole identification, gosh, how many of us want that? Um, okay, let me get back to Jim Farley. I'm going a little bit of everywhere here. He was very enthusiastic and excited and complimentary of everything Tesla has done. Flashing red, just so everyone knows, this is my flashing yellow on Memorial Drive, so it needs to honor it as a stop sign, creep out and proceed, and it did it just fine. Um, and what I loved hearing him talk about was over the air updates to the cars, you know, cause here on the FSD program, right? We are getting updates a lot, perhaps more than those just on the production builds, but you know, we get them a lot and it's driving the entire car, every update, the opportunity for mistakes to be baked in that are dangerous or not safe is very high. The QA team that delivers these software updates have to be commended on the ability of delivering, you know, a good software update. Granted, it's not meeting all of our expectations all the time for the advancement of FSD, but don't forget, it's also driving the entire car. Um, you know, systems, radio, music, you know, everything that, that this car does, you know, is, is can be updated over the air. So. And Jim acknowledged that that was hard, and Elon also reiterated, yeah, it's hard. We all are starting to take that for granted, I think. Um, and as an amateur developer, I'll call myself an intermediate to advanced developer, I don't do it for a living. You know, I know how hard it is to find small little bugs in my code. I, I can't even imagine the type of process it would be re re required to successfully, uh, you know, update as frequently as we do the software here especially now that we're going to neural networks that have some um, <laughs> some probabilistic uh, outcomes in them um, that I think are, are interesting to think about. You know, he also uh, complimented quite a bit, obviously, on the supercharger network, the infrastructure. And the last point I kind of want to make was their agreement on future cars to adapt Tesla's charge port. So finally, we've got another very large carrier agreeing to use the Tesla's charge port. It's much more ergonom ergonomic. It's much smaller. Granted, it was in open source patents, I believe. Uh, so it's not like it was proprietary. But Ford agreeing to adopt the NCAS um, charger profile and standard is huge. I think it's huge globally, but obviously first domestically here in the United States to have another large carrier go that way. Because that means other chargers other than Tesla's might get more of those adapters uh, you know, put on them um, also. And it's those other ones are just so huge and bulky and almost to the point of, of overstressing the point uh, where it attaches to the car. If someone kicks it or bumps it or, or yanks on it, uh, damage could happen. So 
that was probably the last point I think that, re that really resonated and is big news um, that happened on that space. Uh, recommend you read it. It was, you know, Rob Maurer on the Tesla Daily Podcast did a good summary of it also. So if you watch his content, you probably got the gist of it. But uh, hearing the tone of Jim and Elon talking about these subjects was, was quite refreshing to hear. Um, and I think it's worth your time. So that's those are the highlights I wanted to talk about today. Kind of a cloudy overcast. It wasn't really raining. The roads have been wet in, wet in some spots. So no, not a whole lot to see. Well, here on FSD 11.4.1. The uh, the tweet Elon put out last week at about this time was that we were getting 11.4.2 last weekend. Last weekend came and went, hadn't heard anything, still haven't heard any uh, leaks going out to employees or anything. So we might be leapfrogging to 11.4.3, maybe, or maybe just 11.4.2 is gonna have some additional dots on it because of something that they found. Um, but it seems like they may have found it without it going out to employees because uh, I haven't seen any uh, whispers about that. So patiently waiting on the next version. You know, this one's good. Uh, I, it's not a leap over 11.3.6. So those of you that are on 11.3.6, um, you should be very satisfied with that build. It was a good build. I guess there was a little bit of news that they did release 11.3.6 uh, for the first time on a more... Um, a newer build uh, than this car is on. So I believe it's on the 2023.12 branch, branch uh, is now getting FSD 11.3.6. So that's great news, but and that is the first time that's ever happened for anyone tracking this, that they've put out an older release version on a newer branch than uh, the current version uh, that would be considered uh, the newest being 11.4.1. You might need to listen to what I just said about three times if that confused you because there was a shift there. There were a bunch of other tweets by other uh, uh, people out there talking about it, but hopefully uh, those of you out there waiting to get this 11 dot version uh, got 11.3.6. And I did hear some new FSD subscribers got it within an hour. Uh, so I know in the past there was a, hey, I'm going to pay my money and, and anxiously awaiting to get a, a version of beta and it was taking weeks. So hopefully that was also something that was fixed with this uh, release of 11.3.6 on that branch. Um, which could also imply that we might have a little bit of a wait on an update to 11.4. Uh, you know, why they did that might have been to include all of those new subscribers onto a, a safe and proven production branch of FSD beta. Um, and those of us out here on kind of the first wave um, of, of the FSD beta, you know, are, are going to be stuck on this uh, 2023.7 branch for a little while. So anyway, I think it's all great news. We're all getting more miles out here. You know, for those of you that are new to the program, uh, testing it, drive safe, keep your hands on the wheel, keep your eyes looking forward. This camera is always watching. Don't pick up your phone. Don't play with the screen too long while you're driving. You can do a lot of these sort of things while you're stopped at a stoplight, but after that light turns green, it gives you a second or two and it'll uh, start to tell you to pay attention to the road. And those pay attentions to the roads add up to strikes. Uh, you know, if you get three pay attentions to the road, I think on a single drive, uh, you, you, you could be disabled uh, for the remainder of the drive after that. And once you get disabled the remainder of the drive, that usually ends up counting as a strike. And depending on the car you have, you either get three or five strikes until FSD is taken away uh, for a period of time that has not been standardized. So I can't give you the exact number there. So anyway, I think this was a nice, quick, short drive, a little bit of a conversation about a couple topics. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. Maybe you saw something on the screen I didn't see because I was looking outside driving the full time. Um, leave your thoughts uh, in the comments below, whether you're on Twitter or YouTube. I'm posting both of these simultaneously. Uh, on Twitter, it is only for the subscribers. I only charge a dollar for the subscription. I couldn't charge less than that. That was the lowest amount on there. So hopefully those of you that want to see a content exclusive uh, on Twitter rather than YouTube, because maybe you don't like the ads on YouTube or whatever, you can head over to Twi Twitter uh, and take a look at the full form, full length content there too. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you on the next one. Hopefully when we get the next version of 11.4. Have a great day. Here's the bonus round. Is it gonna go in front of this truck? Nice. Perfectly rolled. Forward facing unprotected left hand turn in front of a large oncoming truck.